I nuzlocked a Pokemon game with real-time combat, controlling my Pokemon in an arena with skill and mobility instead of taking turns. And by the end of this video, you'll see how one bird changed everything. The rules are simple. You can only catch the first Pokemon on each route. You have to nickname every Pokemon you catch. And if a Pokemon faints, it's dead. But with all that being said, subscribe to the channel if you're new. And I hope you enjoy today's video. As we arrive in the star region, we go to the lab, meet our rival, subscribe, grab Carl's Jr. the Ryolu as our starter, and immediately make our way out into the world. My first few encounters are pretty good, grabbing Starly, Rattata, and Shinx. Now the thing about this game that will become evident very clearly is that this game's scaling is insane. So let's play a little game. How many Pokemon do you think every gym leader has? Three? Maybe four? Yeah, no, it's six. As we're walking through the first few routes, we find our first static encounter. This game features Pokemon through eight generations along with about 30 custom fan-made Pokemon like Pika Blue and Mew 3. Because of this, there are a ton of areas where we can collect all of the starter Pokemon from across the gens. The first one I find is Snivy, who I name Olive Garden. Since our first gym is rock type, starting with Ryolu and having a Snivy will be incredibly helpful to make sure I don't lose this entire thing before I even start it. Now let me explain how battling actually works, since it's clearly way different than your everyday Pokemon game. You move around with the arrow keys, attack with Z, X, C, and V, and can use up to six items like potions in battle with A. Finally, to switch out, you can either press S or the space bar to choose who switches in. Power points are also changed using a bar that fills and expends PP to use moves as you fight. Other than that, it's kill or be killed, buddy. So this little freak is following me. I don't really know what... Oh, okay, he's gone now. After beating the trainers in the area and making our way to Spica City, we take on the first gym. After five hours of level grinding, the first gym leader has six Pokemon levels 18 to 21. What are we doing here, man? After leveling up Servine and Ryolu to match, we were ready to take take on Mino. He leads with Geodude and a few Leaf Tornadoes take him out quickly. Kranidos follows, and between lower stats and being new to the game, I wasn't the best at dodging moves. But Kranidos, Kabuto, Onix, and Nosepass meet the same fates before his ace Lycanroc comes in. With it constantly spamming Howl and outspeeding my movement, there were some pretty scary moments. It also doesn't help that he got three full restores and a Hyper Potion, but eventually we were able to whittle it down, granting us our first badge. And as we're leaving the gym, easy mode gets it's uh, completely wiped from the game. So that's good for my first playthrough ever. After grabbing the HM for Rock Smash, we head over to a hidden spot in Spica City to find another starter, Mudkip. We also found our third starter behind another rock in Arby's the Chip Chop. While they won't be too useful for this next gym, grabbing these little guys is huge for our run. We catch a few more encounters and meet a guy named Teron, who gives us the ability to find and use Z moves from Sun and Moon. We won't find any of those for a while, but they will be very very important to find later on. We make a few more stops before reaching our second gym in Neo City. This gym capitalizes on water types, but luckily we have a few great options to take it on. Up to this point, I was using a Spanish wiki page for information on all the trainers and gyms, but what I didn't realize at the time was that all of this was outdated. And when I tell you my jaw dropped at the changes, I couldn't prepare for what I was going to witness in the upcoming battles. I got Servine and Luxio up to a level I thought was good enough, and then I took on Willy, who wielded a water team straight from the deepest parts of the Mariana Trench. He starts with a Buizel, who doesn't give much trouble, but it's also a good time to mention that these leaders now equip every Pokemon that they have with moves directly countering your answers for them. Ice Punch and Toxic Buizel is the runt of the second gym. After taking down Buizel, we learn Mega Drain, letting us hold on to a few more potions throughout the battle. Carvana is next, but goes down shortly after. Next is Poliwhirl, who is way too accurate with with hypnosis. Gyarados follows, and by the way, it literally knows Surf and Thrash. I counter with Luxio and take it out without too much trouble. Golduck comes in and Shake Shack delivers again. Just kidding, Golduck has Ice Beam and Hypnosis because that's fun. Olive Garden finishes off the job, leaving one last Pokemon, a schooling wishy-washy. Okay, great. After sending some reinforcements, we take down Willy, earning our second badge. But unbeknownst to me, death was on the horizon. So Willy's ace was level 25. And while that battle was difficult, I was able to scrape by without losing any team members. I didn't really have a guide, and so I was kind of just rolling with the punches, hoping I could handle any surprises that faced me. What I wasn't expecting was a rival battle with Subscribe on the route immediately following Nao City. And when she walked up, safe to say I was a little nervous.
nervous. The fight was going fine, and I had counters for just about everything she threw at me. Ice Punch Elekid? Sure. Ally Switch Kadabra? No problem. A level 27 Ivysaur, the fight immediately after a level 25 Ace? <gasps> no! In a normal Nuzlocke, one misplay can ruin everything. But here? This blood was on my hands just as much as Ivysaur's. Guilt began to settle in, as I just wasn't good enough to keep my Staravia from passing on. I needed to play better, and this was just the thing to spark that in me. Because if KFC closes down, who's next? After taking down Ivysaur with a Monferno half its level, I said my goodbyes to Staravia and pressed onward with a heavy heart, and a reminder that no one is safe. And when I say that, I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about the trainers and gym leaders who have to face me now. I catch a Rowlet, along with finding a Drillbird in Splinter Cave. Oh, game, you spoil me! And I can't just idly sit by, oblivious to what's next. So I start paying attention, following a guide in full Spanish to make sure I have the upper hand and I won't see the light leave another soul's eyes. We complete a few quests and acquire both the normal and water Z crystals. Literal nukes. My team evolves. There's no even playing field anymore. You can use as many full restores as you want, game. You're not escaping the wrath of a man who can't lose. I grind levels for hours, to the point where I literally found two shiny Pokemon, who I caught. I find a static Larvitar, who I caught. I leave a trail of blood in my path until I reach the third gym, which is so fitting giving it's the gym of death. After helping Helia of Sirius City, we go on to battle her and her full team of dark and ghost types. The third gym's ace, a level 39 Mega Gengar. That's cute. Hodgecrow, murdered. Miss Magius, mangled. Shift tree, torch. Sharpedo, sacrifice. Alolan muck. Are we serious right now? And finally, Mega Gengar. Oh, you sweet, sweet child. I'm not locked in here with you. You're locked in here with me. Excadrill executes the ghost, leaving nothing but a gym badge for our trouble. Now that we had a full team that was evolved and up to its full potential, I decided that building teams to clear specific battles was better to increase longevity. After reaching Deneb City, we acquire five hidden packages to gain access to the next gym, which if you couldn't tell, this is a fire gym. We managed to obtain a Wild Hall Lucha as our encounter on Route 11, and I name him Chipotle. I love him. We fight the leader, Bobby, who leads off with Jinx. As I continued on my journey, I learned the value of patience, keeping an eye on both my power points as well as my opponents. I incinerate Jinx, electrocute Dugong, and after seeing multiple heals go off, I'm glad they are. I begin to play with my food, keeping enemies at low health, daring gym leaders to heal their Pokemon again. Because I'm not rushing anymore. I'm playing the long game, prioritizing dodging and countering over going full offense. Mega Glalie comes comes in next, and after letting my guard down a bit, I refocus and take it out. Alolan Ninetales is faster than most things I've seen to this point, but why try and predict movement when I- oh wait, I can. Ninetales has some good special defense, but clearly it's lacking something? Oh, that's right, health. Lapras is last, but there's only so many aura spheres that can hone in on you before you bite the cold, dry dust too. I had learned so much about this game in such a short amount of time, but I kept myself grounded, reminding myself to stay sharp. I also learned at this point that the gym leaders were reaching levels completely different to the playthrough I was watching, so it became a guessing game as to what level I had to achieve next. Going from 25 to 39 to 45, the spread of what could be next was between a molehill and a mountain. I made my way back to the graveyard where I found a Trico sitting next to the leaders I buried. Oops. I found a shiny Noctowl flying around, which I managed to battle and catch. I also found a brand new water starter in Pokemon Reloaded, Ornigrim, into Ornitaro. It's like if Quaquaval was a platypus. After heading south into the Savannah area, I find my rival again. Subscribe. I'm not gonna let the same thing happen this time, so I wipe the floor with her team. Now, there are a ton of battles in this game, with every single evil organization being present, but to be honest, none of them were much of a challenge mostly being there to drive the story. Now that we've made it to Vega City, we grab the bike from a gym trainer to retrieve an item for the gym leader. Nothing crazy, just the GS wall. And now that we have the bike, along with access to fly, we can get around so much quicker. I decide to prepare for the upcoming grass gym, assembling a team of Halucha, Talonflame, Infernape, 
Crobat, Noctowl, and Rabombi. After Mog maxing my entire team, we're ready to head in. And after sauteing every herb and spice in the gym, we reach Rosanna. Something I learned very quickly about Lil Chipotle here, bro was fast. Look at that little rascal go. With moves like dig and fly being able to dodge other moves and essentially lock in on the opponents, Chipotle makes quick work of Roserade with his aerial strikes. Rabombi pollinates Executor or whatever bugs do to treat i don't really know colonize sounds weird it infest maybe torterra is next and with stone edge earthquake and leech seed this thing was a bit of a beast but eventually it returned to the earth as talonflame took it out mega venusaur was next and because of thick fat and synthesis this genuinely took nine full minutes to kill using my infernape with slack off and flamethrower to proc burns and whittle it down the sidui was all that remained but i made quick work of it in comparison to the last five badges down and i'm only getting better it's crazy how one moment can change your entire mindset on a challenge, but I wasn't planning on slowing down anytime soon. Since the next gym was fire type, I planned my next team. I had caught a Sobble over near Neo City earlier, and after evolving him into Inteleon, I realized this was the first time I've ever really used it. So I didn't expect much, but oh man, was I wrong. This Pokemon is lethal, and you'll see why soon. I caught a shiny Sudowoodo blocking the road, saw some hooligans plotting something, and reached Pole City, the location of the seventh gym. This gym was blocked off for now, but we'll be back soon. Don't worry. Ooh, roulette. I also stopped at the mall to grab a dusk stone, which I gave to my lamp in to obtain a chandelure. We ventured west towards the Gara Desert, and after a quick visit through Rocky Cave and fighting Jesse and James, we reached an old western town named Regal City. I settled the dispute at the local saloon, and then went into the gym to continue my trade as the neighborhood menace. Inteleon pierced through Magmar, Rapidash, and Rotom Heat with sniping shot. Swampert pierced through Blaziken, uh, with a nuke, and Excadrill pierced through the floor to extinguish Mega Houndoom. Six badges, one dead restaurant, and a job still unfinished. I managed to find a Piplup and a few more encounters, using this time to complete some side quests and progress the story. Taking down Team Flare, Team Aqua, Team Skull, and obtaining a few Z crystals in Bug, Dark, and Ghost. But in the process of mindlessly walking forward, I got complacent. Watching back the footage, I honestly can't tell what exactly happened, but it looks like Absol mirrored close combat onto Primeape somehow. I have no clue. Regardless, my second death was one that was very avoidable. Reliving Staravia's death in my head, I had a second reason to play even better than I already was. A completely random shiny encounter while grinding, Cookout wasn't supposed to be here, and yet the feeling of losing another member, no matter how insignificant, the game told me I fell off. Oh boy, I needed that. We rendezvous back to Pulse City, where I find that the gym is still closed. Dude, are we serious? After clearing Team Rocket out of the power plant below the city, I visit the three elemental islands to save the region's weather problem and obtain the pieces required to fight Locke and his dragon Pokemon. I find a few more encounters along the way, but during my preparation, I learn something shattering. While Locke's ace is a level 83 Mega Charizard X, I overestimated reaching level 83. 85 before walking in and noticing right away something was wrong. No matter what buttons I pressed, nothing worked. I had exceeded the level cap with every Pokemon I was planning to take on the gym with, and so none of them obeyed me. Well, shit. After contemplating my options, I decided it would be easiest to make another team with what I still had. So I assembled my knockoff Avengers, grabbing Tyranitar, Magnezone, Lucario, Empoleon, Infernape, and Gyarados. But I wasn't going to fall so easily. I run in with Magnezone, and with the help of Zap Cannon and Paralysis, I take down both Dragonite and Kingdra before Garchomp comes in. I utilize switching, making full use of Gyarados' Intimidate ability to lower Garchomp's attack before smiting it with Ice Fang. I bring Infernape in to burn Hydreigon before dragging him down to hell with the rest of the Fallen Beasts. Charizard followed, and after a close call with Tyranitar, I recomposed, healed up, and pushed the Imposter off his Stone Edge. Salamence was the 
only dragon left, and you probably know how this goes. One badge left until the final challenge. I find and grab the Rocky MZ, make my way through Moon City until I reach the final location of a badge, Antares City. Home of psychic types, I find a Beldum and go over to destroy Team Galactic's hopes and dreams before gaining access to the final gym and leader fur. We also get the Master Ball, but that's lame. I create a team of Gyarados, Tyranitar, Magnezone, Chandelure, Decidueye, and Inteleon, and I head in for my final test. I lead with Magnezone, and you can just see the difference in my movement now compared to the start of my playthrough. I go for a Black Hole Eclipse on the Mega and miss, but a few Dark Pulses take it out. Wobbuffet follows, and I'm genuinely scared for Inteleon's life, as Destiny Bond is a guaranteed threat. But I take my time, waiting to dodge and punish until it perishes. Having higher speed was so important to my gameplay, and having Pokemon in the mid-90s already helped me reach my full mechanical potential. Gallade was next, and I countered with Chandelure, using Inferno to burn it, and Shadow Balls to change its typing to Ghost. A new Jinx evolution, Prince Ice, was next, and a similar approach with Chandelure handled the situation, singeing her perfect golden locks. Slowking followed, and I used Spirit Shackles and Leaf Blade on Decidueye to restrain and dethrone the king. Metagross was all that was left, and at level 97, it was quite the adversary. But after a similar shackling, Metagross was powered down, giving us our final badge and access to the beginning of the end, the Elite Four. After mulling over all of my options, I figured out the team that I was bringing. With the Elite Four being Poison, Normal, Electric, and Ground types, I devised what I think was the best options I had available. Swampert, Infernape, Excadrill, Inteleon, Hawlucha, and Tyranitar. I also went and obtained both Ice Beam and Ice Punch for coverage. With my team destined for war, I rushed through the seas until it was finally time for Victory Road. Now in most games, Victory Road normally has a rival battle, maybe a few tough trainers, but this is not most games. We had an absolute gauntlet ahead of us, and we didn't even realize it. We started by battling our first trainer, Blue. Oh, Fuck. Mega Scizor, Black Hole Eclipse, man, they are throwing everything at me. But I'm moving different. One down. Barry was next, and you can probably guess what's going on now. Mega Heracross, a dud fighting Z move, no problem. Wally, Hilda, Hilbert. Hell, even Red was here. Once I had finally reached the end of the gauntlet, I was jumped yet again by Jesse and James, who forced me into a 3v1 fight where I got hit by a Destiny Bond. I thought I was going to lose my dear Infernape, but after after sitting long enough, it wore off, and I picked each piece of gum off my shoe and reached the light of Sun Island, the Pokemon League. I made my final preparations, grabbing every item I could find off of Pokemon in the box to give me any possible edge in a battle, and before I knew it, it was time for war. Okay, starting with Poison, good Z move. Good. Nidoqueen Queen has Poison Spikes. Nice. Patient, patient, patient. Heal again. Okay, that's fine. Gengar, switch. Oh, of course you know Focus Blast. Okay. 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 Let's fucking go. Running out of heals. You're running out of heals. One more. Good. Died to Sandstorm. Let's go. Let's go, dude. One down. Normal Fairy is next. Oh my god, it has Earthquake. Chip away. Nice. Oh no, you have Aura Sphere. Bop. Oh my god, Freeze is so big. Let's go. Okay, after this should be Pidgeot. Huh? What? Whoa, 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 whoa. What is this? What? It, it inverted my controls? What is this move? Oh, no fucking way, dude. Oh my god. Please, 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 please. No. <laughs> god, dude. What is this fucking move, man? Oh my god, dude. You have double team. Okay. There's three of you! God, we won, but we lost Infernape. Arby's!
I had the meats! I had them! Excadrill and Swampert should carry here. Nice kill. Excadrill for Lantern. Good. Mega Ampharos comes out. Just keep going. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nice. Magnezone, easy. Good. Reiki Volt is next. It has Levitate. Oh my god. Be careful. Okay, be very careful. Ah. Oh my god, that might have killed me. That might have killed me. Okay, let's go. Three down, baby. God, this is so stressful, dude. Let's do this. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Inteleon, I need you to clutch up this fight. Use the rent. Use the rent. Nice! One! Torterra. Okay. Of course you have synthesis. Okay, crazy idea. Bro, come on. Come on, dude. Nice freeze. One. Two. Three. Four. Nice. Just dodge, just dodge. One more. Good kill. Oh my god, I just realized what that is. That's solar beam. All right, you know what? No, I missed. Oh my god. Kill this thing, please. Nice! Mega Tyranitar is next, or not? Is it really a Mega Garchomp instead? Oh my god, dude. Yep, there it is. Yep. Yep. Yep! Yep! Oh my god, I need to heal. Okay. I forgot I take Sandstorm damage. Uh, just keep dodging. Chill out, man! Let's go, baby! Come on! One more fight. Oh my god. Good hit, baby! Five! Kingdra's next. Okay. Oh my god, that's a lot of damage. Good sequence! Magmortar... Ow. One more. Nice. Three. Cyclo, we ball. Ow. Ow. Nice. Two. Rhyperior, we switch. I, bro, what do you want me to do about that? No way. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's fucking go, dude. Mega Venusaur. I guess Excadrill? No way. That's so bad. I have no heals. I don't want them to heal. I just have to go for it. Oh my god, dude. Good. Good. Dig. Come on. No! One hit, please. Yes! Yes! Oh my god, dude. This game is literally Dark Souls. It's over. We did it. Star League Champions. Completely nuzlocked. Oh my god. If you made it this far into the video, thank you so much for watching. Leave a like and maybe subscribe for some more Pokemon content like this. Until next time.